Look at that. That's so cool. Fisker Ocean, I think that is, right? Welcome, everybody. My name is Michael, and today we are discussing one week after starting in banking, my journey, and what the next steps are. So we ended five days of teller training and of in preparation for banker training. We are a banker one. After 15 or 14 weeks of training, multiple people have said between those. So let's just say 15 weeks. So in a couple months, I will be promoted to banker two as long as I pass the certifications, which that's fine. So I will get my NMLS license. NMLS, if you self-pay, it can be pretty expensive and there's a lot that goes into it. I, I've read that you know, with banks, it's kind of just, oh, once you pass the classroom training, which as long as there's more than 80 hours, you are fine. And that's why it's probably 15 weeks in this case. So uh, obviously there's a lot that goes into it. There's regulation. You have to start from the bottom and uh, go all the way to the top, right? So I'm not a teller, but I still will be doing teller duties. There are branch managers that have also been on the teller station that have actually started from tellers. Uh, there have been district managers throughout these five days where we're a little short staffed. There was an individual who uh, I haven't met yet. Uh, they had an injury, an assistant manager who um, was also a banker too, a relationship banker, I guess is the term for it now. A lot of these banks have that, you know, it's customer experience banker, relationship banker, da da da. Uh, 1834 banker I saw with Old National. There's a lot of these positions and they're all pretty much the same thing. They're a banker, a just your base bottom level banker that will help with at some banks help with the tellers if they're a smaller bank or at larger banks you won't be at the teller stations but you'll be learning the process you'll be setting up checking accounts savings accounts uh, maybe doing HELOC loans you'll be working with mortgages but not fully that's a mortgage advisor position but you can send you can send referrals to the mortgage advisor to the financial the private wealth advisors and eventually the goal here is to get into private wealth. We want to get into a private client banker position, which after that, the real goal is private client advisor. The guy that comes in, spends a couple hours with clients, leaves, maybe goes to another branch, depends on the bank, of course, or is there fully and that's all he does. That's all he focuses on is growing wealth for their clients. And also they get paid a, a lot of money, a fair ton of money. And uh, most of these guys, anywhere from 100 to 200,000 and more. And then you're, you know, once you're a financial advisor, a CFA, certified financial advisor, or a CFP, certified financial planner, at that point, if anything happens, you can always get out of banking, be uh, in, a, in a private wealth in industry, private equity investments, uh, go to, you know, outside of banking, there's the big investment uh, corporations out there, Fidelity, where you could also get into cryptocurrency. There's Charles Schwab, there's a bunch of others, right? Merrill Lynch, but that's also the kind of banking. Uh, JP Morgan, of course. But right now, our goal is we wanna get into private wealth. And if, if the goalposts shift that, hey, I want to go into corporate banking or become a underwriter, or maybe the other way, uh, instead of going into private wealth, you go from a relationship banker to an assistant manager, to a branch manager, to district manager, to a vice president of your district. There's a whole lot of positions and not all of these positions require degrees. Some positions do require licensing, but for me, I will finish my degree. We're actually, uh, pretty much I finished 20 classes. I have 20 more to go, actually 19 of which one is the final essay, the capstone project. And at this rate, within the past year, I finished those 20. We will have this done at maximum by next March, but the real goal is this December or earlier. It could potentially happen earlier. So we're accelerating our classes. The next step is I'm very inspired by my wife who started her master's uh, at a good state university here in Illinois. And I really enjoy that. I wanna do full-time online, potentially a master's in business administration again, because I'm currently doing my bachelor's in business administration, so the MBA would be nice. But if you do it at a state school and potentially want to do it at a better school in the future, you can only do it once really. So once you have it, mm, but it depends. I mean, it depends on if I'm planning to move out of the state, which I'm kind of leaning towards that. So we'll see. But if not, then I'll just do a master's in business management and we're able to go uh, later do the MBA. So we did a huge step from car sales where we're working more hours, 
now we're working less hours it's guaranteed you're not going over 40. i mean maybe there might be a teeny tiny bit of overtime but the tr banks try not to do that there's a lot of opportunity in banking and i wouldn't be here without my sales experience so i'm eternally grateful for car sales experience it was a fun time however now focusing on everything they're always going to ask in interviews where do you see yourself in the next five years and that's where i want to be i want to be in private wealth in uh, investment I want to be a financial advisor. And the big thing this year, on top of finishing my degree, I'm signing up for SIE exams. Once you have your SIE, sometimes companies may pay for 6, 7, 63. They will also pay for your SIE or they may reimburse you for that. But it, it just depends on which company you're working with. But the big one is the SIE exam, at least for banking. Once you have that, then you can focus on your 6 and 63 uh, a lot of these companies will require for private wealth as well. Uh, life insurance, that's probably going to be the easiest of them all. And the NMLS, because you're going to get that regardless. And then seven is once you want to go from private client banker to a private advisor. Uh, each bank has a private wealth group, but they're all different terms. So just using the normal industry terms here, I guess. Once you have that, there's also eight and there's a bunch of other stuff. But the most important thing is if you can get those kind of four big ones, then you're able to, and the life insurance as well, uh, then you're able to basically guarantee yourself a position. Now, on top of that, later, the CFA or CFP, or if you can do a combo of both of them, that's the real ticket there. That's something probably for next year because some of these exams can get a little expensive in the materials and whatnot. But right now, my semester's ending. I did have uh, a couple stressful periods where I was thinking, oh no, you know, my essay, uh, one essay got re revised, uh, it got re resent, geez, I can't talk. It got sent back for revisions. We did it, we revised it, everything was fine, and they accepted it, but I was worried, uh oh, you know, my semester's ending here in six days. Is it gonna be possible that I may not pass? I passed, everything's fine. But now I have these six days where I obviously don't want to start another class because I'm not going to finish it in six days. I mean, potentially, maybe if it's an easy class, but I don't want to risk it. And with that, it gives me a little bit of time to at least get started on training materials right now for the SIE licensing. And once we get our bachelor's degree this year, once we get at least one or two or maybe all four, the real goal is all four this year, then at that point, it solidifies your career opportunities there. The bank that you're with, obviously, Hopefully you wish all the best and maybe you'll get a promotion in the future. But if not, if you move out of state, for example, you're always able to go to a different bank or not even a bank, but an investment company and become a financial advisor and an, an RIA, right? So with that, once you are a CFA, CFP, you're set. You're making a hundred grand or more. Some of these guys make 200, 300, 400. The sky's the limit. And that's where we want to be. That's the way out of my debt. I'm very excited because we're finally seeing a path here. And I've always been interested in finance. That's why we've had a cryptocurrency channel. Once I'm there, out of my debt, where again, it, it'll be a huge upgrade to, you know, potentially double your salary within the course of a year or two or three. Then we can start investing again once we're out of debt. And that's the real gem right there because then you have your job and you're making money from your investments and side hustles and whatnot. So I'm very excited. That's the plan wanted to share with you because we've started it the first week i like banking i really do as with any job there's going to be certain things you like certain things you dislike but this is an industry that i feel like it'd be good for plus i like wearing suits it's nice it's nice cryptocurrency maybe will come back in the future you never know it'll certainly be a plus hey you're working in banking of course going from tradfi to fintech again you never know but that's way down the line so just wanted to share that with you We'll, of course, keep you updated on the journey. And if anybody else out there has already done this journey, let me know how it's been. There's a lot of people I talked with. Some of these people are uh, obviously wealthy. They're living in good neighborhoods. One of them was driving a Bentley. I mean, hey, you know, if I'm, if I'm able to get to that point, that's where I want to be in life. So it is certainly motivating. We're going to get started on everything right now. And at worst case scenario, the worst case, if it doesn't work out, this year it'll be for next year it's not a question of if it's a question of when and the big thing is if you are stuck in a job that for whatever reason is not working for you maybe you want to change industries 
that MBA will always help you. Now, in my case, I changed industries just now and I'm, I'm liking banking, but to solidify everything, that MBA would be tip top. So a couple of years from now, my, my wife, who's uh, currently an accountant, her plan is to become a CPA. She'll be a CPA, I'll be a CFA. That's, that's the goal. But she's a lot smarter than I am. So right now she's managing our finances. She's doing everything and I am just along for the ride. Yes, indeed. Thanks so much for watching. Have a good one. Take care. Okay, so we did some more research and it's not a certified, it's a chartered financial advisor, but a certified financial planner. There we go. The CFP is the easier exam, a lot easier compared to the CFA. The CFA can take anywhere from 12 to 15 months, some people even all the way up to six, seven years. Now, obviously, as with my education, we're certainly not going to be going for a couple years. We're going to try and accelerate the time frame. They said four years. Well, my buddy got his degree done in two. I will get mine done in two as well. And if people are saying, hey, it takes 12, 15 months and that's the fastest I've seen, I'm just going to say it's probably going to be a year, or maybe at worst case, a year and a couple months. So that's the end end goal. It's not the primary goal. The primary goal is the SIE, the 663, and then later on, seven, CFP, CFA. And uh, the only one I won't be doing is the CPA because that's obviously for accounting. And uh, I'll leave that to the wife.